Hello everyone, welcome to the Belt and Road face-to-face. -face. Actually, you know, Pakistani doctors are very much trained, competent, and they're renowned for their competency in the world. Construction of uh, China-Pakistan health corridor and also cooperation in the medical field, I think, uh, would directly benefit the people. Uh, I think uh, there are a lot of potential, a uh, lot of medical tourism potential is there. Hello everyone, welcome to the Belt and Road face-to-face. -face. Our program is co-produced by China Economic Net and Wash News Television. I'm Meng Xiaotong from China Economic Net. Today I'm pleased to be joined in our studio by Chen Xizhong, visiting professor at Southwest University of Political Science and Law, former defense attaché in South Asia. And we also have Mr. Kungwa Obai from Pakistan, who is head of Wordu Department at Pakistan Embassy College, Beijing. Welcome. Let's enter the first part, hotspot. China and Pakistan have agreed to step up the latest ICE technology in Pakistan and make efforts to boost the health corridor. Under the joint promotion of the Liaoning Provisional Development and Reform Commission and the Pakistan Embassy in China, a signing ceremony of the cooperation was held recently in Beijing. The launch of the comprehensive project of eye health for children and adolescents in Pakistan by the Haiz Eye Group and Pakistan's DEA Group has added a new chapter for the deepening of China-Pakistan eye health cooperation. There is large potential in the uh, health cooperation between China and Pakistan. So what specific cooperation can be carried out in the future to boost China-Pakistan health corridor? I think there are a lot of potential. Actually, you know, the Pakistani doctors are very much trained, competent, and they're renowned for their competency in the world. And they are already working in the different parts of the world uh, as a doctors. But the problem is the infrastructure, the hospitals, the equipment, the medical facilities are not like this, like in China. So mostly people after getting graduation, they don't have the job opportunity. So here actually we need the help of China. Chinese companies are very much famous to build good infrastructures. They can build their big hospitals and as well equip these hospitals with a good uh, uh, latest machinery. Pakistan will provide doctors, nurses, and other uh, medical staff. In this way, this joint venture make a hotspot Pakistan for the rest of the world as well. When they have a good infrastructure, they have good facilities and competent doctors, people will come to Pakistan for their um, medi for the medicines, for the uh, treatment. I think uh, this is a very good uh, concept. And uh, initially, it was you know, China-Pakistan economic corridor. Then you know, uh, we got the concept of a culture corridor, then tourism corridor. I think uh, now we are discussing health corridor. In the future, I think uh, there will be a lot of uh, uh, corridors. That means uh, CPAC has you know, uh, entered every field of our cooperation between the two countries. And, uh, and this shows that uh, the China-Pakistan now economic corridor is constantly enriching and developing. And the uh, construction of uh, China-Pakistan health corridor and also cooperation in the medical field, I think, uh, would directly benefit the people. Uh, you know, your Prime Minister has mentioned uh, the people's livelihood. So, so this is directly involved uh, with the improvement of uh, health care. So for the construction of uh, China-Pakistan uh, health corridor, I propose uh, uh, two initiatives. That means uh, the governments uh, of the two countries uh, and, uh, should play a very important role. At the same time, the medical institutions, uh, they also should uh, have close cooperation. That is uh, between uh, medical institutions in China and medical institutions in Pakistan. So we should you know, uh, give full play uh, of the two uh, initiatives. 
And uh, recently, I've got you know, a piece of information that China-Pakistan enterprises, uh, they are going to have uh, to establish a laboratory, medical labo laboratory. That, is, uh, uh, that means uh, non-government organizations are, are also going to play a very important role for the cooperation in the medical field. And uh, so this is very good de development. And uh, there is great p potential uh, for the cooperation between China and Pakistan. Pakistan Medical Association once stated that uh, China-Pakistan Health Corridor would lay the solid foundation for the development of medical tourism in Pakistan. What's your take on the potential of medical tourism in Pakistan? Uh, I think uh, there are a lot of potential. A uh, lot of medical tourism potential is there. Actually, you know, Pakistan basically a cheap uh, uh, you can say uh, treatment is very cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, even in, uh, if you compare with the China, uh, even a very minor surgery in China, uh, like surgery for this finger trip, mm -hmm, uh, you may mm, cost more than 10,000 RMB, mm -hmm. or around 10,000 RMB. Mm -hmm. But in, if you will do this thing in Pakistan, maybe it is two to 3,000 uh, RMB. Mm -hmm. So the problem is Pakistan don't have that type of uh, infrastructure actually, the laboratories, mm -hmm. the hospitals. Mm -hmm. So here actually we need the help of China. Mm -hmm. And if they will build a good hospitals, mm -hmm. good laboratories, so all the people of the rest of the world, they definitely will prefer to come Pakistan for the treatment because it is, it is 10 times cheap, maybe more than 10 times cheaper than their countries. Mm -hmm. So a vast scope of the health corridor, I uh, believe, there is available in, pa uh, in Pakistan. Mm. Mr. Chen, how do you view about the potential of medical tourism in Pakistan and what influence will it bring to both countries, people and economy? Actually, this is another concept. Uh, normally, in the past, you know, in China, uh, India, Pakistan, medical care is mainly you know, a, a kind of welfare. So because uh, many people do not have enough money to have good health care. And here uh, about uh, medical tourism industry, that is uh, uh, another concept. That, mean, that means uh, how can we explore the potential of industry for the national economic development. And uh, I've got some figures here. 2000, uh, in the year of 2000, the global uh, uh, medical tourism industry had a revenue of less than uh, 10 billion US dollars, the whole world. Uh, that is uh, in, 2000, in, two, in the year of 2000. And after seven years, uh, 2017, then uh, the revenue uh, in the whole world was seven times uh, uh, higher than uh, to the, to the year of 2000. That is 700 billion US dollars. In recent years, uh, this uh, industry has uh, you know, maintained an uh, annual growth of about 20%. So uh, it will be, you know, it is uh, developing very fast. So if we do not you know, develop uh, he uh, health uh, or medical tourism industry, then you know, uh, the economic development uh, will, be, uh, will not get so much. So for Pakistan especially, uh, for the development of the national economy, uh, we should you know, join hands to develop medical uh, tourism industry, that is industry. Yes. That means how yes. to produce revenue. And what do you think of the suggestion proposed by Mr. Obaid about the, about the infrastructure, Mr. Uh, infrastructure is, uh, the, this question is uh, it closely related to the foundation uh, of the economic status, you know. If uh, the economy is strong, if uh, the pos economic position is strong, then we can do everything. If you know, the government does not have this uh, financial strength, then how can we, have, uh, uh, now how can we develop the facilities? And uh, I think, you know, uh, so that's why we discussed the question of medical tourism industry. So through this way, we can produce some revenue for the development of the, of the infrastructure. Yes, I, uh, if I want to add something. Mm -hmm. Actually, yes, you're quite right that there should be a, um, uh, something to 
provide the uh, investment. But you know, um, this is the win-win situation for both the countries actually. Yeah. If, uh, for example, the Chinese companies or the Chinese government help to build this uh, infrastructure in Pakistan, they definitely will earn money from that. Mm. And after that, uh, maybe they can uh, do it on um, some good type of loan and like uh, they already have done in the CPEC. So uh, after that, they will, uh, the Pakistani side will get the uh, fruit of that. And actually, this this make uh, um, this the uh, hot spot for the rest of the world, yeah. and the world will uh, come there for the treatment. China has, you know, with the expansion of. Uh, China's demand for cotton, with demand a lot of cotton yarn, uh, because our textile industry is uh, in import also. It, it lies actually the fact that Pakistan uh, make it no tariff. Uh, in Pakistan, uh, the whole country, almost uh, the whole year is quite warm, and the Pakistani people do not need so many clothes. <laughs> I think this is one of the reasons they export. You're watching the Belt and Road face-to-face. -face. Let's enter the second part figure. Pakistan exported 54.613 million US dollars of cotton yarn in August, registering a year-on-year -year decline of 51.36%, according to the Pakistan Bureau of Statistics. However, its cotton yarn export to China has surged in the same month. As data from China's General Administration of Customs shows, China imported 41.836 million US dollars worth of cotton yarn from Pakistan in August, which is 4.36 times the 9.592 million US dollars in the same period last year, with a year-on-year -year increase of 336%. Uh, what do you think is the reason behind the surge of Pakistan's cotton yarns export to China while the general's exports are decreasing? Actually, uh, the main reason behind this, the surge in import, also, is it lies actually the fact that Pakistan uh, make it no tariff mm -hmm. because uh, for the export to China or any other country. There is uh, tariff free. So this is the main reason mm -hmm. for this increase, mm -hmm. one thing. The second thing is Pakistani yarn is quite cheaper than the, even the Chinese yarn. Mm -hmm. yarn. So uh, the Chinese, when they ex import from Pakistan, mm -hmm. uh, they even get it on the cheaper price than they will buy in the China. Mm -hmm. And the third thing is actually the cotton is a main Mm, product of Pakistan uh, agriculture mm -hmm. and Pakistan uh, have a lot of um, Im give a lot of importance to the uh, cotton growth so Pakistan actually earn a lot of money from cotton mm -hmm. so now they they ultimately want to export that mm -hmm. because in their own country they don't have a lot of um, uh, I mean the textile facilities to pro produce the finished goods. They actually want to export this yarn. So the, uh, this cheaper price, no tariff, this make uh, the increase uh, of the uh, export. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chen, do you uh, agree? Yeah, three uh, reasons, uh, but uh, I think the most important reason is that uh, the Pakistani cotton yarn is of high quality. Yeah. Quality is the best, maybe yeah. best in the, uh, all in of the, the world. world. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll give you another reason, four yeah. reasons. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently, Ch Pakistan's uh, cotton mills uh, have uh, purchased uh, a large number of uh, uh, domestic and important uh, cotton. Uh, due to the reduction, reduction of domestic uh, cotton production and also rising prices uh, in Pakistan. And uh, as of uh, September 15th, uh, that is last month, the market volume 
of Pakistan's cotton was only 1 million and 40,000 bales, and uh, with a year-to-year -year decrease of 820,000 bales. So there is cotton production is lower than last year. Yes, yes. Uh, there is not enough cotton in the domestic market. So the cotton mills have imported from other countries. And I think the number one is uh, uh, from Brazil. And the Pakistan also imports from uh, East Africa and West Africa, and also Argentina and Sudan. And also you import from America with special prices. China has, you know, with the expansion of uh, China's demand for cotton, we demand a lot of cotton yarn uh, because our textile industry is uh, you know, also very developed. Uh, they have to import a lot of uh, uh, cotton yarn. Uh, and uh, the price uh, in Pakistan, as you said, is reasonably uh, uh, cheaper than, yes. uh, yeah, this is one of the reasons. Mm. Uh, what measures can be taken to further boost the Pakistan's uh, cotton yarn exports worldwide? Uh, when I was small, uh, you know, we had a lot of uh, cotton fields in, in my hometown. So I say I grew up uh, in a cotton uh, producing area. And uh, the cotton, uh, so that's why I have uh, some knowledge about uh, cotton. Also, very hard job and hard work in the field uh, yeah, yeah. from early morning till uh, late at night. A lot of you know, work in the field. Yeah. And the cotton growth needs uh, three basic conditions. That is uh, uh, sufficient light, uh, sunshine, and uh, suitable water. Climate, the soil, and the environment you know, of Pakistan are very suitable for planting uh, cotton. And also, why Pakistan produce a lot of cotton? They export, they export also cotton yarns because Pakistan, uh, in Pakistan, uh, the whole country, almost uh, the whole year is quite warm. And the Pakistani people do not need so many clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is one of the reasons they export. I mean, yeah. and we have a very cold winter, you know, yeah. uh, padded clothes in uh, yeah. cold weather. So uh, after you know, the export, uh, uh, I, uh, after the export forms uh, uh, the scale, I think uh, if you your export forms a scale, it will form the scale uh, uh, effect effect. Mm -hmm. So further drive the development of cotton related industries and further drive the exports of uh, you know cotton yarn. And uh, the textile industry in, Ch in Pakistan is quite developed because uh, you have uh, four, mainly four uh, export-oriented uh, industries and the uh, textile exactly. industry is the pillar uh, yeah. of export, you know, uh, accounting for about 60%, more than 60%. Uh, uh, recently I got a figure that is accounting for 66%. I think uh, if the government has proper policies, uh, we will increase, you know, uh, substantially in the future. Uh, I, uh, I will agree. Uh, in the, actually, the case is, in Pakistan, uh, what I felt, that uh, in, there are few areas, especially the South Punjab, mm -hmm. the Indus, Sin, uh, they are cotton producing areas. But the problem is, nowadays, there are two main, they are, the former is facing two main problems. One is to plant the cotton it became a very, very uh, costly thing mm. because the pesticides, yeah. mm. because the di diseases, mm. because the seeds. Mm. Pakistan don't have that quality seed. Seed is good, but actually the production is not that much like in China or USA or in India, one thing. Second thing, there are a lot of diseases. Those make the farmer's life miserable and the pesticides. So. I suggest the government that there should be a loans given to the farmers and the government should make sure this thing that they will provide such kind of seeds and if a farmer don't have the money at the moment, so government will provide on the loan seeds to the farmer, mm -hmm. they will provide um, uh, pesticides and then I think so, uh, and also take care of the um, rates in the market as well. Because in the last five years, we will see that the cotton rates are going down and down and down, and there are a lot of 
cotton mills in my area as well because I belong to South Punjab mm -hmm. and there are a lot of cotton mills and they are going to close these mills because the demand in the country, although there is a lot of demand, but even then the cost of the production is more than the uh, when yes, they sell, yeah. mm, sell that mm, mm. cotton. So because of that, they are uh, leaving this. Uh, so to solve this problem, no, uh, I think uh, the authorities should take measures, uh, say let's, uh, we should have research and development. And uh, the, you know, for research and development, uh, and the government has to invest. Yes. Uh, for, you know, for the better qualities, uh, for the better uh, the generations in the yeah. future. So to solve the problem, otherwise uh, the farmers, you know, because of pesticides, they yeah. uh, buy pesticides and uh, then the, the earn, you know, the income from the cotton may not be enough for, for, for the for yes. after the experience in yeah. my hometown. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Actually, Pakistan is considered a hidden jewel by the locals when it comes to the natural beauty. Mm -hmm. uh, if Pakistan wants to promote its natural beauty, mm -hmm. uh, it has to be eco-conscious. So I encourage you know, the Chinese people to go to Pakistan after COVID-19. And you are inviting them to see this is the eco-friendly environment. Uh, Pakistan's uh, eco-tourism will definitely uh, develop greatly in the days to come. You're watching the Belt and Road Face to Face. Let's enter the third part culture. As China celebrates its National Day on October the 1st, which this year coincided with the traditional Mid Autumn Festival, the National Day holiday ranged from October the 1st to 8th this year. Data from the Ministry of Culture and Tourism of China indicate that over this eight day holiday, people in China have made more than 600 million trips domestically, generating around 500 billion yuan in tourism revenue, reflecting a strong regard in domestic tourism sector in China. At the same time, tourism industry in Pakistan is also showing strong momentum since it resumes business on August the 8th. What places in Pakistan do you recommend Chinese, uh, Chinese tourists to come? Uh, in Pakistan, a big uh, ancient civilization like Gandhara, like Indus Valley civilization, and Gandhara actually belonged to the Buddha. And here in China, a lot of people are, um, you know, uh, related with the Buddha, even in the Southeast Asia people. And Pakistan have a lot of things about that. The mm -hmm. Tesla city actually is the uh, center, yes, was the center of the uh, Buddha, Buddhism. So, and um, if you will visit the pa Lahore Museum, Pakistan, you will find the statue of Buddha, mm -hmm. uh, which is called Fasting Buddha. Mm -hmm. And that statue is the unique in the whole world, mm -hmm. very unique thing. And uh, um, not only this, there are a lot of other things as well in the Tesla Museum, in the Lahore Museum. So um, actually the, the main thing is Pakistani government is not maybe uh, attracting the people uh, and they maybe not now actually this mm -hmm. government, the Prime Minister Imran Khan um, focused on this mm -hmm. and he is trying his level best to attract the people to come Pakistan mm -hmm. and uh, this way uh, I hope Pakistan uh, tourism will uh, rise mm -hmm. definitely. There are many places in Pakistan worth exploring for Chinese people. Mm -hmm. so, Ms. Chen. So uh, I think you, you should take us uh, to Pakistan. Uh, yes, sure. to see the <laughs> to see the locations. Uh, yeah. uh, last time when I said, uh, as far as so far as the tourism is concerned, uh, Pakistan is the best destination all over the world uh, for tourists. And uh, for you now, Miss Wang asked, uh, what, what is the exact location? And I think it's for people with different interests who have different uh, destinations, yes. uh, locations uh, to to see in Pakistan. 
And uh, Pakistan, uh, so I, because I, the locations you have mentioned, I have, like, I, I have been to all yeah. the locations. Yeah. Yeah. I visited Texala, yeah. I visited the museum, yeah. uh, I've been to almost every corner of Pakistan. I have the uh, good knowledge about Pakistan. So I encourage you know, the Chinese people to go to Pakistan after COVID-19. Uh, yeah. So how you have to control yeah. the situa situation. Yes, yes. Sure. And uh, I always, uh, you know, believe that uh, Pakistan has a great potential uh, to develop tourism. And uh, according to the statistics of uh, the World Travel and Tourism Council, in 2019, uh, the contribution rate of of, of tourism industry. Uh, to Pakistan's DGP was uh, about 5.9, uh, about 6 percent, yeah. and China is uh, 11 percent. So I calculate, uh, you know, if uh, uh, if uh, uh, Pakistan's uh, tourism industry uh, develops to the level of uh, China, uh, to reach our level, uh, then you know its contribution to GDP will be uh, increased by 5 percent, uh, that is uh, to 11 percent. Ours is 11 percent, mm. and uh, then 2.37 million jobs will be created. Yes. Mm -hmm. And on the World Tourism Day, the Prime Minister Imran expressed the commitment to develop uh, eco-friendly tourism in Pakistan. What's your take on the availability of developing eco-friendly tourism in Pakistan? Yes. Uh, um, you know, our Prime Minister Imran mm -hmm. Khan is uh, very much concerned about that nowadays. Um, he also spoke mm -hmm. in the United Nations about that. Uh, actually, Pakistan is considered a hidden jewel by the locals when it comes to the natural beauty. Mm -hmm. uh, if Pakistan wants to promote its natural beauty, mm -hmm. uh, it has to be eco-conscious. Uh, because otherwise, uh, if they destroy their natural beauty, then there is no point of visiting Pakistan. So Pakistan can be heaven for the people wanting to get closer to the nature. And uh, if they visit a remote place and see trash and um, like this type of things and the air quality is bad, um, I don't think so people will uh, want to visit uh, that places. So another thing is that Pakistan can be very attractive for the younger generation who are very much eco-conscious. Mm -hmm. You know, th this is the uh, discussion of, mm, of the today that everyone mm, talking about the, mm, uh, this thing. Mm -hmm. So they are also, um, uh, they are always looking for to travel with a low footprint and trying to get closer to the nature. And due to this, Pakistan can be ideal hotspot for them. So. Uh, Actually, th th there, there are a few things which Pakistani government, Pakistani nation, nation, all have sit together and solve these problems mm, to make the things like uh, if you want to call the people from abroad and you are inviting them to see this is the eco-friendly environment. So you should take few steps. You should make the things like this way that when people come there, they will see, yes, this is the eco friend. Mm. Mr. Imrahan repeatedly pushed for the growth of Pakistan's untapped tourism sector. So, what can we do to promote this sector's development? Uh, I highly appreciate you know, uh, mm. the new ideas and the new concepts of uh, Prime Minister Imrahan. Yeah. He has a lot of uh, new ideas. So, this is a point I highly appreciate. And uh, in recent years, eco-tourism is rising uh, in the world. Pakistan is uh, rich in natural resources and has many favorable conditions uh, for the development of uh, eco-tourism. I firmly believe that uh, you know, with the, the improvement of security situation and uh, also improvement of uh, infrastructure, uh, Pakistan's uh, eco-tourism will definitely uh, develop greatly in the days to come. Thank you for watching the Belt and Road face to face, and thank you too for coming to our show today. See you next time.